I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of Explosion 4. Got fire through the roof of the fire building in the entire rear section. Please, now remember given the payday. Has you been accounted for? Okay. 610B, now is the main date. 610B. I'm out uh, here. We got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling. Fire shown from the second floor. Give me a second alarm on this. See up there, the top floor. I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke. Go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. Got people on the front fire escape here with windows sensors below them. We need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one story single family frame. Heavy fire showing from the attic. So we're using all hands. We got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor. Second line being stretched. Primary searches are underway. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Old School. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my good buddy, Chief John Salka. And we've got another great show planned for you. Um, we are actually, um, let's 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 talk about this first, John. We are at, we're in New Mexico. We're in Los Alamos. At Los Alamos. Beautiful. Beautiful. Los Alamos, New Mexico. Beautiful. The drive here, uh, the wild horses. and Wild all horses stuff. right off the side of the throughway. The, not the throughway, but the highway. Yeah. Oh, and everything, the wildlife, the hill, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful here. And, you know, it's another place when we travel where you go, you don't know really what to expect. And, you know, the guys and the gals and everything else. And, you know, for me, with, with Aaron, Aaron and Aaron Manny, have they been awesome? They picked me up at the airport with, with his dad, Aaron's dad. Aaron, brother's on the job. And his dad's retired big-time law enforcement guy. Um, you know, so we were with, between him and Manny. Um, what, a, what a great visit. And then the chief. How about the chief? What a, what a, what a great host. What a gentleman. What a nice guy. Uh, and we sit down and broke bread with him a couple of times at dinner and just a great conversationalist and, and, and into the job and, and, and proud of his little, not little, but proud of his yeah, community and his department, you know. Uh, and they've got a buttload of staffing here. They've got, they, there's a lot of cool, I, I've been joking with them about you have all the money in New Mexico here. Yeah, right, right. But they, what a great place. You've never been out here. And like I said, the boss, the chief is outstanding. Can't say enough again, like I said, about Aaron and Manny. And then the rest of the guys have got, we, we, and we've had, not only that, we've got different departments here. Some have driven four or five hours. You know, I did I did day one, which is the Chiefs and their guests, um, time to lead chief. We did that. And then you and I do a three days of company officer cami. Right, day one in the books. It it has been it has been a great, 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 great visit. And we're looking forward to to the next couple of days of finishing things Two out. More days. Yep. So if you get a chance, you want you want to meet some brothers and sisters that that get it and are doing it right. When you when you drive through here, you're coming by here. This is the place to come look. Now, before we move on to our show, John, um, we have we have to pause for a second and and, and mention something. Um, you and I both know Wendy Norris. Uh, Wendy Norris is the 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 head, the director of the Texas Line to do the task force. For our listeners, if if you're on social media at all, you've seen Wendy every year at the National Fall Firefighters Foundation at the memorial escorting families. Um, and when I was in tech, you know, well, in tech, so I was chief of Louisville, intimately involved with the task force. She is always at the IC. Oh, how about always, 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 always there for the families of firefighters and mm -hmm. for the departments that yep. have suffered a loss. She's a chaplain. Yeah, now, now, you know, now Wendy, years and years ago, she was a firefighter, big roof collapsed, commercial building. She broke her back. So she couldn't return to service. So she felt her way to serve was through being a chaplain and doing things. The one person you see at everybody else's funerals, take care of the family. Very tragically, very sadly. Her husband uh, passed away the other day. He, uh, 32 years with Houston, I think retires a battalion chief, and then was the chief uh, down forest. Uh, I'm sorry, down in and you know in a department in Texas. Okay, um, and he went to a structure fire and passed away. Yeah, uh, yep. passed away at this you know, suddenly, at unexpectedly, um, and uh, just you, know, you, 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 the last person you think is going to be on the receiving end of right. that is right. Wendy and a hard. Our hearts go out to her, and, oh. and our prayers are with her and uh, and her husband's soul. Yeah. yeah, Billy G just posted the funeral arrangement. So, Wendy, we love you. Um, you're awesome. We're so sorry for you. So, folks, please keep Wendy Norris and her family, her beautiful daughter, uh, uh, in in your thoughts and prayers. Yes. And uh, uh, we'll 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 keep thinking of you there, kiddo. Um, all right. So um, we're teaching today. We're talking different stuff. And one of the stories I always bring up, John, is how I I don't find it fascinating. Other people do that. You and I 
look, we're students of the fire service. We learn something about this job every day. We watch the videos. We both call it the fire porn. We watch the videos. We're in classes. Um, I love that the picture the guy posted that we talked about it, like we're at Teaks of you and Bill Gustin sitting in the front, our buddy Bill Gustin sitting in the front row after both of you got done teaching with no pads in your hand, taking notes from the guy who's teaching it. And the kid was like, this is amazing. They just got done teaching it. And they're sitting, I go, and, I, and inside I'm going, so why is that kind of strange? You don't think right. we go to class and learn stuff. We're into the job. We're into it. So I I, I asked you to tell the story today. Um, and we did about when you were in Wichita, Kansas. And, um, you know, you know, Brian was, the, you know, your son was going through the academy and you were in the hotel across from like the town square, the little square. And they had like a farmer's market or something going on. Exactly. Farmer's and, market, yeah. and you hear the tower ladder pull up. And you're like, oh, they got a little job. Oh, it must be. And the guys get off the rig. And you, you go downstairs, you grab your coffee, you walk across the street and tell that part of the story because I'm leading to something about some of the tools they had out there. Oh, okay. So so I walk across the street. Uh, like Rich just said, there was like a farmer's market going across the street. And the building to the left of the farmer's market was the apartment house where uh, Brian and Rachel and, and the kids uh, were living at the time. They had just, they were new. They were, they were new to Wichita. So they were in an apartment. And um, so I walked across the street on the way over there. And I said, hey, let me mosey over and check this towel ladder. It was a big, beautiful Pierce towel ladder. If I remember correctly, a, if I remember correctly, a black, black roof and a black boom and just a big, beautiful monster of a rig. Probably $2 million now for God knows. But anyway, so I'm standing there looking at the rig. I had a coffee cup in my hand because the hotel I was in was very nice. And they had a coffee machine down in the lobby. And so I had a paper cup with coffee. And, and I'm sitting there looking at the rig. And also these two guys will come walking up to me. The, the two guys that got off the rig when I when I saw them pull up, you know helmets and coats and boots and gloves and every, fully dressed SCBAs on their back. They come walking over to me like, "How you doing, Chief Soccer?" Right? I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. How are you guys doing?" Yeah, pretty good. I said, "How how'd you know me? I don't even have any fight upon a jacket or anything on it." No, no, I recognize you, Chief. I've been to a bunch of your seminars over the years and stuff like that. I I know who you are. I said, "Oh, that's great. How are you guys doing?" Ah, pretty good. I said, "I I saw you roll up here. I guess." You on a run or something? Yeah, there was supposedly a little odor of smoke in one of the, you know, all these folks here have tents, little tents and canopies set up that, you know, some of them are selling this and selling that jam and and hats and socks and, you know, you know whatever. He said somebody had a little odor of something burning, so we just went over to check it out. And it's okay. It was one of the uh, incense things. And But uh, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. What are you doing here? I said, my boy, my, bo my boy Brian is here. He's, he's getting on a job. Really? He's in the academy now? I said, yeah, he just got on. They just started. So we start talking about this and about that. And I, I said, I'm checking out this rig. You know, we didn't talk too much about Brian. We did a little bit more, I think. But I said, what a what a cool, cool ladder truck. Big Pierce towel ladder. He said, oh, we love it. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, there was three guys on the rig. There was the driver and, and an officer and a firefighter in the, in the crew compartment. And I was talking to the driver and the firefighter. And they're both firefighters. The officer, obviously, was a, um, I believe it was a captain. Different color helmet. They wear yellow helmets, the firefighters there. So he said, oh, let, me, let me show you. So he's walking me around and showing me this and showing me that. And he, show, he shows me the, the saw compartment. Opens up a saw compartment. One, two, three, four, five, six power saws. <laughs> three circular saws, gigantic partner saws, and three big chain saws. Right? They got more saws than they got people on the rig, you know? And then he brings me around the back and shows me the, the whole the whole ladder, the whole compart the whole assignment of, of portables in the back of the ring. And what was very interesting, he said, did you ever see this? And he pulls out a roof ladder, you know, and of course the butt comes out first, but when he pulls the whole ladder out, there's a butt at the other end too. Both ends of both beams have, have the, the foot, you know, that you can dig into the dirt and both ends have the, have the hooks. folding hooks. So you could, you could carry this thing. He said, Oh, well, you didn't say all, but he said, you know, this is what we do. We order them like this. We didn't modify these. We, they came like this. And now, so you, you, you know, you fold the hooks out, you slide this thing up when you go up to the peak, you, you set it like you would when you're going to cut. And then if for some reason you need to go to the other side of the peak, you don't have to spin the ladder around, you know, like do a 180 with it and knock somebody off the roof. You can just slide it up, bing, drop it over the other edge, fold those hooks in, fold the other hooks out, and you're ready to go. I said, what a cool thing. I got 30-something years on a fire department, 40-something years on a fire service. And I've never seen that before. And of course, since then, I've mentioned it to some people and said, oh, we do that. Oh, we do that. So I, I thought that was a cool a cool idea. Um, the other thing they do is they attach a metal, the New York roof hook, they, you know, a halogen hook, 
they attach the hook to a lot of their ladders. They have a they have a little piece of hardware that they attach to the ladder. No drilling, they just fasten it with like right. a, it, it's a clamp, clamp, a hole tight, clamp. It, yeah. tightening thing. And it and it holds the it holds the butt, not the butt, but the bottom, the point of the of the hook, the point of the handle. And then the other end is is connected up at the top of the ladder. So when when you throw this ladder up, when you get up there, you don't have to carry up a hook. Almost like a lot of people used to put hooks at the tip of the area ladder. Portable ladder on the on the extension. Now this ladder. is on portable ladders on extension ladders. On now you throw, you throw the ladder up, you extend it up. By the time you climb up there, twenty rungs, there's your nice New York metal pipe pole. You know what I'm saying? And they get like a go. little leather loop that that goes around the that top holds the hook at the top. They it, boop, and off they go. You can maneuver the ladder around. You can throw it. You can drop it. You can raise it and extend it, and and the, and the hook stays perfectly on there without a problem. Well. And that, and that's what you got. We were telling the story today in class. Got got us thinking about you know maybe tonight, maybe today. Actually, we 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 talk about ground ladders, portable ladders, right? You know right. some basics, some uses, some different things like that. And uh, you know, it's, it's you've heard me talk about a lot. I know you do too. About you know we don't train enough on ladders. We don't haul them enough. We don't carry them, guys. Underutilized and under underappreciated oh, uh, tool. There are some. I know some pumpers. I don't think they've ever taken the ground ladder or the the the, the extension ladder off the side. Um, you know, you're not going to get good at throwing them and raising them if you don't throw them and raise them. And when the time comes at a call, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work. You know, portable ladders are like every other tool on the rig, whether it's whether it's a power saw, whether it's an axe and a halligan or a K tool. They're like every other tool. The the better you want to be with it, the more you have to use it. You got to you know. You should be looking for, you know, this goes for officers, but it really goes for firefighters too, because I worked a lot of great firefighters over the years. I was a lieutenant in 18 truck in downtown Manhattan, tower ladder with a full complement of ladders. Um, I was in 11 truck as a young firefighter when I first had a couple of years on the job. Again, full complement of ladders with a 100 foot rear mount. And even good senior fire or even good junior firefighters, you know what? Every opportunity you have, you should pull a ladder out and throw it up rather than finagling around and trying to reach something and you know what pull a ladder out and throw it up there and and, and learn how to set the ladder learn how to raise it learn how to grab the how you will talk about all those this, little things the 35 or like chicago is 38 because of some of the building heights how to work as a team with a partner you know you, you see some guys it's like and I, i'm not knocking them but it's like the first time they've ever held a ladder and and one guy's high one guy's low and i'm like oh, oh. you're a team and you if you have to heal and heal and you're in charge Right. And, and the butt should come off first, right? You should be looking at the butts of the ladders when you when you're looking at the at the, the storage area, right? You should be, they should be adequately marked. Now that's not something every single firefighter does, but we're talking company commanders or chiefs or whoever's in charge of that rig responsible for it. That's an important element of portable ladders. I can't tell you how many times at training sessions or at hands-on training events I've looked at. You know, you open a compartment or you just happen to look at the portable ladder storage area and. You know, if you look upside down, you can see, oh, oh, this is a third, this, this, this is a twenty-eight, but it's up, but it's upside down because they labeled it without looking at it, how it gets loaded in there, and it can't get loaded in the other way, so it has to get loaded in that way, and the numbers are upside down. Every little thing we do, whether it's portable ladders or otherwise, we should be doing it to make things easier for us, not harder. So they should be on there. They should be big, white or black or whatever number is you know, very visible, and it should be read straight up and down. You should be able to read it and see what size ladder is. That's going to help you select the right ladder. You might be looking through and see a 24, go to reach for it, and then see 28. Oh, well, let me grab the 28. You know, so so even little things like labeling. And, of and most places, you know, most ladder companies are going to carry, some may carry like a banger ladder or whatever, you know, or but the 35, the 28, the 24, and then the roof ladders. And the 20 foot straight, you know, right. And all those different things like that. Um so let's talk real quick. Let's real quick before we go. Be, so we get straight ladders, a couple of various sizes, and we got portable ladders. And portable ladders, my perspective, this is just me. Portable, portable ladders can always be your first. Extension ladders. That's what I meant. Straight extension ladders. Being if I didn't ladders. say it properly. Yeah. No, no. Be, portable straights and portable extensions. Extension should be your first ladder you choose. Extension, because you can throw up a, a, a 24 or a 28 foot extension ladder without extending it. And you get you get the same climb, the same distance as the 20 foot straight. But now you have the versatility. Now you can extend it up two, three, five, six, eight rungs if you want. So you got a very versatile ladder that's flexible. You can use it to get onto a, a one-story setback, and then you can roll it over, extend it four more rungs, and get a guy into the window. So the how floor. important is it, though? We've talked about before, but to know your buildings, you know, know your buildings in your in your area, heights and all that. Whether you go into a roof, go into a ladder, go into a maybe maybe you're at a split level or whatever. The working lengths of the ladders it's one thing to say 
I've got a, a 28 foot ladder, but how much actual work, you know, there, you know, and there's a lot of great drawings out there on uh, Facebook and, and on, especially on Instagram about, going, yeah, you know what it is, but it isn't, you know, you have to know you should. And that's a great drill. That's a great drill. You go out with your ladder truck and your crew, you should be able to walk around. Obviously you're going to have to find a couple of places that you can unash the rig and walk around a building and look at it, you know? So maybe check out a couple of local taxpayers where you can go around the rear. I mean, Maybe you had a couple of old vacant buildings or maybe you have a, you know, you don't want to start throwing ladders against people's houses. But my point is the best way to learn how to, what ladders reach where you should be able to, as an active interior structural firefighter, you should be able to walk between two houses, look up at the second floor window or look up at the setback of a commercial building and say, you know what, uh, Billy and Tommy, go get the 28 footer. You should be able to look at that and know that a 28 will reach it and a 24 might. So you'll take the 28. Well, and that's what I used to tell guys. If you look and you go, what do you think? You know, to yourself, you're thinking 24. If you're not sure, go to 28. Why wouldn't you? It's like stretching extra hose. I'd rather have enough hose on the front lawn than be like trying to drag the pumper off the, right. over the curb towards right. the building. Yeah. And that's a whole separate skill, separate from pulling it, transporting it, raising it, extending it. Those are all separate little skills there. But the first important one is selecting the right ladder based on you know, look where you're going to put it. You don't get off the rig, grab a ladder, go walk in between two buildings, and then try and find a place to put it. You find a place first and then say, all right, Billy, get the, you know, or you run back with your partner, or you run back by yourself. Another thing that everybody should be able to do, everybody, every firefighter should be able to throw almost any length of a straight ladder, and certainly a 24-foot extension ladder. That is throwable. That is raisable by a single firefighter. And well, if you don't, can't do it, you should train and get yourself. And, and we've talked about this, especially like in, in the small stuff about training your firefighters on how to throw a 24 or 28 foot by themselves, how to get it off, how to carry it, how to throw it. So we talked about this, being, whether it's on your shoulder or below, you know, carrying it, but you know, butt forward, setting it down. Against, and you sort of are throwing it. You almost yeah, really are throwing it. You have to yeah. kind of oomph it so, yep, so yep. you can, because you're. Get that one butt, one butt but right got, into the you, ground. You, you know, it's a balancing act. Get it up, raise it. Actually, I used to tell you guys, raise it kind of, boom, flush against the building with the beam out. Stabilize it. Yes, yeah, with the beam out, lean in with your shoulder. Look right in the middle of it. Lean in. You're holding it with your body. You're holding it with the fly section against the building, the beam out. Then you reach up, untie your halyard, and then you go click, click, click. You start pulling your halyard. Bink, 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 bink. Make sure that you know the dogs lock and everything else, and right? and you can actually, if you're gonna, you can actually stand there and do your one handed, you know, to, you know, tie your halyard if you want to. Right. right. Then, right now, you've got it raised up. Fly section is like I said before, is against fly the is in the bed's out. You're you're it's not going anywhere. You've got it balanced to get you're you're leaning into it against the building. Now you back away, you hold it, and then you 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 turn to face it with two hands on the beams. You walk it out the base, big couple bing, of little bing, jumps right out, and then you roll it. Into position. And now that you have your how you're tied around the two rungs somewhere right in front of you, which is before you before you started pulling the butt out, even if you pull the butt out, it could possibly, like if you didn't tie that halyard, you could possibly release the dogs by pulling that ladder out if the top drags yeah. against the building and, if, and you could get the fly slammed down on you. So that's why it's a good idea to tie that halyard right around those two rungs right there. Nice snug halyard tie. And now you can pick up the base and sort of Bounce it out a little bit, and then you can actually pick it up by yourself and walk it out to to an estimated exactly. spot that's going to be a good climbing angle. And for that single firefighter you know, raised, John, we've talked about this. You might be the OV. You might be that one firefighter showed up. You're by yourself, and you're throwing ladders proactively. Or worst case, you got a firefighter in the window that's being chased out, separated from his crew, with fire over in his back, and there's not enough time to go. Uh, truck twelve engine. When you get down here, right. no, right. last key. Get a lot, or what? Are you just, are you just going to throw it? And if you're a department volley or otherwise, but I think I think it's more common in volunteer fire departments. If you have exterior firefighters, and there are lots of exterior firefighters in America in volunteer fire departments, that's something exterior firefighters should have a very good handle on. Exterior firefighters should be able to select, transport, raise, extend, and position portable ladders on the outside of a building, around a house, around a commercial building, around a taxpayer, all by themselves or with help. But that's a that's a great tactic. That's a that's a great set of tools that exterior people can use, and without even a consideration of going in, because you know they're restricted from that. Well, and again, it's all about being proactive. But now, and I just said this: you're the driver operator. You're by yourself. You got one line off. The crew's in there. 
you're doing fine. There's nothing you're doing but watching your tank level or your hydrant's good or whatever. Let's say you got, you got, you got an hydrant. I used to tell you, look, if you're standing looking at the front of this building at a two-story, grab the ladder and just say, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with if you're short-staffed. Right. If you're the driver and you're just standing there, like we always talk about hookup and lookup. And who's not short-staffed? Right. And be able to throw that ladder by yourself, you know? Right. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to walk away from the pump panel. Some guys think they got to be handcuffed to the pump panel. Yeah, you got to pay attention. Everybody's got radios now. If the engine's having trouble, if they need more pressure, they need a little boost or something, they're going to give you a yell. You can, you can quickly jog back to the rig and, and, and jump on a pump panel and get done what you have to get done. So don't worry about doing that unless you're a couple of hundred feet away. You know, that would pull you away from too long. But if you're right in front of an ordinary house on a suburban lot, yeah, don't be afraid to do that. The, 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 they make it easy now on these pumpers. All these pumpers got these drop-down ladders, and, and plenty of them still got the ladder just mounted statically on the side. You can just reach up and pull it down. Again, something you should be able to do, and something if you do a little bit more, it's going to be broken in. If you haven't moved the ladder since you received the rig, it, you might not even be able to get it off the bracket. It might just be sort of stuck up there. you know. So again, moving these ladders around a little bit and handling them on a regular basis is a good idea. It, it sort of breaks them in, too. It loosens them up a little bit. Well, you know, so we, we talked about the single firefighter rays, you know, and, and knowing how to do a 24-28. We talked about, you know, choosing the right ladder, knowing your working lengths and all that. There's a lot of great things out there, a lot of great, you know, pictures of things and graphs to show you about that stuff. So you, you have a set. Let's say you're going to go to the roof, okay? Two things I want, I want you to talk about. We're going to go to the roof and cut a hole, all right? And you set your extension ladder, all right? You set your poor ladder up, up against the building, all right? Click, 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 click. And so many guys go, because they're looking up at it from down the base, instead of a partner stepping back. You know, I think it's so right. important more, for guys. More, more, Exactly. Okay, you're good. So I know it's kind of basic, but how many feet, I know what I'm going to say, do you want to see that the tip of that extension ladder over the gutter or the parapet? Listen, if it's a flat roof, if it's a flat roof and you got a parapet, let's just talk a normal parapet, a foot or 18 inches or maybe two feet high, nothing big, right? From where the ladder touches the top of the parapet, I think you should have it at least four, maybe even five rungs. You should be able to climb up there, and when you when your hands reach the top rung, your waist and your knees should probably be above the parapet. Right. By then, you should be able to take your last step with your foot and step off the ladder onto the top of the parapet, and then step up with your other foot, and you haven't even moved your hands. I see guys getting a little sloppy at the top of ladders, and I was taught by some very good guys, both off the job in Nassau County and Mineola, where I started in the Valleys, and, and then... Uh, on the FDMY, if you're climbing onto a roof, peak roof where you got a, a roof ladder that you're going to carry up with you, or a flat roof, if you're climbing a portable ladder and you're you're disengaging, you're getting off that portable right. ladder, those two hands at the top of that ladder should not move. When you get to the top of the ladder and your two hands are together on the rung at the top, your one foot should step off, your second foot should step off. You can almost practically step off the parapet onto the roof. And that's when you're letting go of the ladder. Some guys get fancy, they let go of one hand, they put one hand on there, and that's where you make the little mistake. That's what a little bit of ice at the top of the parapet on a cold night that you didn't see. You have one hand off for a moment, and all of a sudden, boom, and you're slipping and sliding or making a sudden move, and that's not where you want to do it. I always like to keep, and I make a conscious, conscious effort of keeping both hands on that rung until both feet are off the ladder and my weight's transferred to the building, and then I step down. You well, know? And, and let's talk a flat roof for a section. I can tell you guys, even on aerial ladders, you see these guys get up and they, they stand up on a parapet and they jump. And I'm like, the impact load of a firefighter in gear, if you're wearing an SCBA, hitting that roof. Forget there might even be fire on it. Some of that against the parapet over the years of the leaking is all rotted. It's probably the it's worst the shitty place. old roof you can go and right you, through. And you jump and, and you know what? Off you go into the cock loft or the floor below or whatever. I, I've always been hang on to it because if something goes wrong, I can pull myself back out. Right. I can steady myself. If I, you go to slip, like you said, whatever, I have a hold of that. And you're holding your weight, your own body weight and, with your own arms, and then you lower yourself down and just touch the roof. And the, and the gutter edge, if you're going to appear, it was the same thing. And and you see so many guys, they go chink, 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 and then they go and they step off and it's fine. Getting up, It's like climbing a tree. Climbing up is the easiest thing in the world. Coming down is harder for little kids, right? Now you go off, you're up there doing your stuff. Maybe you're tired, you were chopping, cut, whatever. Now you get down to the ladder and you're looking. And it's two rungs over the edge. Or wh whatever you go, 
Now yeah. you have to your center of gravity. You have to bend over, try to grab a hold, try to get a foot on there, balance, and maybe you saw it a sling. Let me you tell you a little story how I used to teach that. I was a New York State fire instructor, and I used to teach up at Montauk Falls, uh, part of a career firefighters uh, training, uh, a couple of hundred hours, two hundred eighty three and eighty. I can't remember what it was, but uh, career career people in New York City have to get that certification before they go to work, right? So. So they would have a couple of academies every year, and I, and I, and at the time I was a captain, and I would do the I would do the the, the truck work, and uh, so they had a big gymnasium there that they used to park rigs in and portable ladders and furniture for the burn building, and that's and we uh, it was a flat roof building with a gravel roof, and no parapet, no parapet. So we used to set up these extension ladders. I'd be down there with my baseball hat on, saying, "Okay, let's get the ladders up there, guys." The first ladder right there. Up, 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 five rungs, six rungs, good. Put it against. That thing is five rungs fully above the level of the roof, right? Now, they didn't even know that there wasn't a parapet. They figured it out when I got up there. Ten feet down on the same wall, we would put another portable up, and I would put the tip of the ladder six inches above the edge of the roof. I would make them climb the ladder that was five rungs above, walk up, their feet would almost be on the roof level, on the rung closest to the roof level when their hands were at the top rung, and they would simply step off, step around, and walk away from the ladder onto the roof. They would climb up, and then I would tell them, okay, walk 10 feet down, find that ladder. Now they're looking at a ladder. They're like two and a half stories up on a flat roof looking down. The port of the ladder is maybe six inches above the edge of the roof. Now they have to get like on their hands and knees, back up. Some guys wouldn't even do it on their hands and knees. They got on their bellies. And push themselves back on the gravel to try and get a foot down. It oh, it, I'm uneasy talking about it right now. It, it ver and that was simply because the ladder was not extended a few rungs above the roof. That one little action, that one little precaution of putting it four or five rungs above where the whether it be the top of the parapet or whether it's just the edge of the roof with no parapet, it makes it like you walk next to it, you put your two hands on it, you swing your leg around, you step on it, and you climb down like a gentleman. And that. Little things like that is what makes a professional out of a firefighter knows how to use portable oh, and, ladders. Again, like I said, it's the old kid climbing the tree. When you look down, you go, how, how do I get back? The branch I pushed off to get up here, where I'm is that? on my foot and all this yeah. different stuff. My, my eye at the bottom of my foot is never working right. I can never see out of the bottom of my and foot. I've got so many pictures of great ladder sets, and I've got so many pictures that are not set well. Right. Right. And in the hurry, and the smoke guys aren't paying attention, especially... You know, it's one thing to be at the training field. It's another thing you're at a job and there's smoke pushing out of the eaves and, and you can't really see. That's why, again, I'll go back to having your partner going, stepping back, going, no, no, John, keep going. No, go, 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 go. That's good. Stop right, right. there. Right. When you're by yourself, you know what you may have to do is step back and go, I shorten myself a little bit. I and now you got to go and re-engage and, 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 and either raise it or grab the hide again. Another important thing you just mentioned, whether it's a smoke condition or a night time, is... I always thought that there should be some reflective tape and or paint. Paint turns into a messy mess. But there's, there's great reflective tape and 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 things you can attach to the tip of portable ladders. We know the aerial ladders have it, but the tips of portable ladders should have it too. That top rung should maybe have two little two little rings of reflective tape on, on the top rung at each end near the beam. Or maybe even a piece of reflective tape six inches down up around the top round end of the beam on both sides, right? So you could be across the roof and flash a light real quick and say, oh, there's a lot of guys. Let's go. And you can you can get yourself back to you can retrace your steps after moving around on the roof, either cutting a hole or making a search or doing whatever well, you're doing. You know, and we, yeah, exactly. And we're talking placement, too. You know, I, I just looked at a picture of a, of a long extension ladder set at the edge of a roof. Uh, some guys are so worried about raising it over windows because, you know, because the fire extends all stuff. And I'm like, God, you know, I, you know me, my dad was a roofer. I was a roofer for a long time. I threw buttloads of ladders. I threw them in all different kinds of circumstances to be a roofer. And I learned what works and what doesn't work. And one of the worst things is to be like near the edge and you're climbing and all of a sudden the left side sinks in the, in the grass or the dirt or whatever. And eight inches away from And there fall. you go. Yep. And there you go. Or yep. you're sliding. Or the only thing that keeps you from going is you hang up on something or whatever. So placement in itself is huge. No, again, if you don't get out and look at your buildings, we've said this for everything, for hose stretches and everything else and area ladder operations, if you don't get out there and look and go, okay, guys, I know you, we were out here a month ago and we talked about 
how much holes you need to get to the third floor of that building. And then we were here like months before. We said, where do you set the air ladder? Forget all that. Let's talk about ground ladders. Guys, tell me right now. We're looking. We haven't we haven't done nothing. We haven't taken nothing. Tell me how far. What do we need? And where would you set it? You know, because there's some buildings, if you're going to always be never set over a window, you'll never set a ladder because there's window, 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 window whatever. Right. So you have to be smart about where you're placing and picking it. But ladder placement, knowing where you're going, am I going up to make a rescue and I'm putting the tips just inside the just inside the window above the sill so if it slides the beam catches and so people like doing that if you can if you can if if the click if the distance between rungs puts you in the right spot sometimes you got to kick your heel out just a little bit so you kick it out a little farther and it doesn't have to be at these precise degree angles it doesn't have to be you can look at a lot and say you know what that's a little bit of a low climb but you know what it puts the tip right where i want it i always like i like the tip under the windowsill but what you just said provides one little extra level of safety. And, and I'm not talking, uh, uh, what I was going to part two of that is, you see guys that put, they raise it too far, and they actually get their work during the window. Now when it's they time to come up. They got a whole up over the windowsill. Now when it's time to come up, it's like doing the ladder bell. We've taught people. Now they're trying to, how do I, I'm, I'm how in do here, I climb over that the window still is at my belly button. I'm trying to climb over this ladder to get on it. And the only reason I said just, I, I, and I, I like the idea of just below too, but you know, with unstable ground, grass, dirt, gravel, whatever, I use if you can pull it off, I say just try to set the tips just inside. Right. So if they slide and they the catch. top rung still doesn't even break the plane of the windowsill yet. Right. So so the ladder really isn't over the tip. It's just the de- the two beams. That really is a great point. Because now, even if the ladder wants to, even if you get a little mud down there, or even if the weight shifts, you know what? It's gonna hit the side of the window frame. And exactly. it's not gonna slide that way. That that's a great, that's a great little tip. That's a great. When you're going tip. to go in, maybe make a rescue, do a vent and a search on a second floor, versus I want to extend higher off to the side because I'm a reach over, you know, I'm on the other and I'm a I really haven't whatever. seen, I really haven't seen in all my years in the fire service that the Navalis in New York City, in Titusville, Florida, in Mineola, I've been in four different fire departments. I've really never seen the useful purpose of putting a ladder up to a building next to a window. Next to a window. You know, you know, like I said, sometimes guys going up and being able to Take a window without the glass falling out of it. I guess. You know, I guess. I mean, frankly, I would just throw the ladder into the window and smash the and smash the well, window with the ladder. Let's talk about that. But real, I was going to talk about that right. too. So one of my favorite things to do as an OVR as, as a truck guy was vent second floor windows with my, with my extension ladder. And I I just saw a guy at a video doing this where he he's got it. He extends it and he's facing and he's got his hands on both beams. Right. And he's smacking. And this ladder is going, the, the ladder is actually going bang, bang, bang. And I go, number one, that's wrong. You smash the window, the glass is going to slide down the beams. It could slide down the beam right to you. So, right, what I wanted to do, what I did was turn the ladder on its side. On its edge. And, I, and its edge, yeah. And use the beam. First of all, the beam doesn't flex. The beam, the, the, the you know, you got this extension and it's it's bending and you're bouncing on these right. thermal paint but windows. But the other way, it's rigid. It goes, not only is it rigid, it goes smash. And where does the glass fall? Straight, Straight down. down. Instead of down and it's coming at you. And, it's and then you down. roll it halfway to flat, bang it around a little bit, maybe get any loose glass off, lower it to the sill level and up you go. And you never climbed the ladder yet. You got a, a bang, window vented exactly. and a ladder up. And you get up there, finish it off, you know, clean it up and everything so you can get in and not right. get cut. But... But I, I would just want I just watch this. I, you made me think it was just like a week ago. I watched this guy at a fire and he's I'm like, he's bound, he's bouncing. There's he's working boom, too boom, hard. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, dude, just turn the ladder sideways, turn on its edge, and and let the beam smash the glass and drop down. Instead of doing this and having it come, I'm like, right. Right. golly, man. And, you know. and I want to correct what I said before. Not correct, but but put the other point forward. Yeah, you know what? If you, if you put the ladder up next to the window, zoom up there real quick. Your partner's button it, or you put it against a tree or a fence. Or you climb up there with, with your hook. You know, you reach it down at the right angle so it doesn't slide down. No glass slides down your hook. And if you give the window a couple of good bashes, you really clean the window out. You know what? You can zoom right back down the ladder. You can go boom, boom. You can just roll the ladder. You don't even have to lift it off the building. You can just roll the ladder over once, roll it over twice. Boom, it falls into the window opening. You pull the butt out, down to the windowsill again, and now you're ready to climb back up. So it's a little bit of a delay, but some guys want to do it that way. So that's acceptable, too. As, as I talk about, and you do, too, there's, there's a couple of ways to do everything. And you got to find a way that you're comfortable with that works well for you and, and go forward with that. 
Another point I want to make before we either run out of time or, or, or forget about it is electrical wires. Yes. You know, I, you can't talk about portable ladders. And just about, I can't say just about everybody has metal ladders now because you've got the California and lots of other places, or let's say in other places. I don't know if it's a lot of them. There's still a plenty of wooden ladders right. out there. And they, I'm love, not sure. and they love them. Huh? They love and them. And they love them and knock yourself out and they make their own. They get some crafts from there that actually build the ladders and stuff like that. They last forever, supposedly. Um, my point is, I don't know what the conductivity of a of a wooden ladder is if it's if it's non conductive if it if it won't transmit electricity or not. But I'm talking about metal ladders right now, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to hit any type of high voltage, you know, equipment or wires with a wooden ladder either. But let's go with metal ladders. You should always look up, especially at nighttime. There could be wires going to the corner of a home. There could be wires going over the roof of a commercial building or or to a connection point on a commercial building. Especially commercially, you may have you may have more dangerous, more high voltage wires there to deal with than a, than a house, but a house wire will kill you too. The, the well, service and, going into the house. It was actually a commercial building, not not very big, one story. And we threw the extension ladder up. We we're going to go up, and I got up, and you know when you don't realize you're being like energized, you're being. I'm I'm I'm, I'm like, and what I didn't realize was the wires had failed because of the fire, right? And they didn't fall; they dropped, and they were they were in, they were into the gutter, an, an aluminum gutter. That was now the whole thing was energized. My ladder's contact, you know, contacting it. And I was like, holy shit. I could, you know, I'm just, right. so sometimes guys are guys and good guys, good guys and gals are in such a hurry that they're not paying attention. And that's why good bosses stand there and go, no, 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 no. Hey, watch what you're doing. What? Right. Because the workers, the hardest working people, they're throwing ladders, they're doing stuff and all that. That's why that supervisor, that company officer, that boss has to go, you know, look like we always tell, look up and live. Right, so you want to look where the normally expected position of the of the wires are, and you know, a lot of houses have the wires going to the front corner. Sometimes, the, sometimes the wires for two houses go off one pole, and to one house it goes to the right. to the right side of the house. To the house next door, it goes to the left side of the house, maybe down the driveway. You know, there's, there's different ways to do lines. it. Yeah, there, I I still see it right now because my home in Pennsylvania. The wires go right to and connect directly to the side wall of the house and then go back down and and, and enter to the building. Other houses, my home in, in New York State, has has the service connecting to a to a uh, a pipe. The pipe, the drip lines where it's the drip. Right. Like so it, there's a know. drip line there, the wire comes in, it's connected by cable to the top of that pipe. That pipe, there's a restriction, there's a code. It's got to be like two feet above the edge of the roof, right? From where it comes through the roof. And then it's got that cap on it so the wires are coming out underneath the cap a little drip a little drip loop and then the wire goes back to the pole but that's where it's supposed to be but now you get a storm and you get a fire and a branch come down and knock those wires down now they could be laying across the lawn that you're going to step on on the way going to the house because you didn't notice that the wires were down or like you just said the wire is is broken off of its normal connection point and it's laying on the house on a piece of the roof or on a gutter or whatever it is there's so many things so many places I remember one time going to a mutual aid fire in Washingtonville with South Blooming Grove, and the house was pretty far, pretty far back off the road. Big, beautiful front lawn, and it was a back deck was roaring. The house, I don't, I don't think the house even burned down. I think the back deck was roaring, and eventually they got a line back there and knocked it down real fast. But I was walking back there. I was a chief at the time, and and I was walking across the grass, and and I'm using my flashlight in front of me. I'm going back and forth, almost like I had a metal detector, right, <laughs> with the flashlight. And a guy caught up to me. One of my guys caught up to me. He said. What are you doing, Chief? I said, I'm walking to the back. No, what are you doing with your flashlight? I said, you don't know what I'm doing with my flashlight? He said, no. I said, I'm looking for a wire. I don't know if the wires fell down here. I see the service is right there, but maybe the electrical wire fell down. Maybe it's in the in this four-inch grass. You don't want to step on a live wire. And if you don't have your light down here, you just because it was a nighttime fire. Right, right, right. Again, it's, it's not a portable ladder thing, but definitely want to look up before you start swinging ladders, raising ladders, extending ladders you could you could successfully raise a ladder up and then start extending it and you could extend right into a wire that's coming off the second floor of a house right so you really got to pay attention to do that that is a pretty miserable way to get hurt or killed oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah well so we've been talking i'll 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 i'll, I'll risk it say about some pretty basic stuff, but it's not basic stuff. You know, you know, is that something that makes sense? Well, it is basic, but it's important. Yeah, there you go. That's the way to say it. It's a basic, but it's important. So let, let's finish things out here. Okay. Advice regarding portable ladders. Well, 
advice, but I got a couple more questions. My first question is, do you know right now, you're sitting here listening, right? Do you know, can you tell me right now, if you're assigned to a ladder truck or ride a ladder truck, can you tell me right now, we have one of these, one of those, we have a 24, we have a 28, a 20 foot straight, a 14 foot. Can you tell me, can you recite your, assi your assignment? Can you tell ladders? me what you have on the one extension ladder you have on your pumper? Is that right. a 24, 28? And you really need to know that. Guys put a lot of time into remembering, oh yeah, we got we got 10 lengths of two and a half, reduced to inch and three quarter, and we got three lengths of inch and three quarter on top. We get, you know, we get 13 lengths of hose on that. You know, and it's a dead load and we can stretch it to this distance. That's great. How long is that ladder? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, right? So obviously on an engine, it's one or maybe two. Maybe you get a little straight ladder nestled into the little extension ladder. But on a ladder truck, you might have a whole complement of ladders. And you should know that. You should know what size ladders you have. You know, three section versus two section, depending on the height. Here's another thing before we, we finish things up. Let's talk back to roof ladders real quick. You know, whether it's a 14, a 12, a six, you know, knowing what you need. I see guys go up there and like, oh man. And they're, and they're pushing, they're reaching and pushing up with the hooks down to hook the ridge. Because they selected too the, short of a roof ladder. And then they get up and they're, again, now this is what happens is the kid climbing a tree. They get off and they reach up and they pull themselves up. Now they go up there, they're cutting sawdust, wood chips, whatever, shit, fall and snow. And now they come down and it's like, how do you get that six I... foot from the bottom of the roof ladder <laughs> to the top of the ladder that's on against the edge of the... So just what you said, John, if you don't know the lengths of all your ladders and what ladder you need for that particular task, not just job, we have a house fire. Like we did ladder trucks, right? Like ladder placement. Well, before I could tell you what exactly you want, I, I need to, am I venting? Am I going for a rescue? Are we defensive? Are we doing this? Am I driving a rear mount versus a bucket? Where do I set the bucket versus the rear? It's the same thing with a ground ladder. Am I, am I going to a window? Am I going to a roof? Am I going here? Am I just trying to get access? And wherever you're going, if you run between two houses or around the back of a, of, of a commercial building, you know, the captain says, hey, John, get to the roof in the back. Put a portable ladder up and get us off on the roof. Okay, Cap. Now you run back there and you look and you say, okay, good. I'm going to need... Uh, this much distance. Well, if you don't know what your ladder lengths are, it doesn't matter if you know what the height that you're <laughs> going to climb to is. You sh you know, again, always, not always, always, but almost always go for an extension ladder. That's going to give you a lot of versatility back Exactly. And, and a little bit more, I think, stability with not as much bend, bounce. Heavier, heavier piece of equipment. You know, everybody post a picture, the firefighter standing there with his or her gear, and it says, Turnout gear weighs, a firefighter weighs this much average. Their gear weighs this much. Their air pack weighs this much. Their halogen, all the different weights and everything. And then we tend to forget that person's now climbing a ladder with a saw and a hook oh, and God. a gear. And that thing's doom, doom. And as I said, one of the best things that means is my dad teach me how to be a roofer and me roofing all those years because yep. I learned ladders. So I guess my bit of advice as we close things out here, you talked about know your ladders, know your lengths and all that. My thing would be, and, and I can say, I, I'll say this for both of us, get, get, get your ass out there and train, throw ladders. You know what? You, you can go to an alley of a strip mall and you're not going to do any damage. If nope. you're talking cinder block walls with heavy gutters, yep. there's plenty of places. You're not going to go to someone's house. Like you said, you're not going to go and smash someone's gutters and things, but there's plenty of places that you can throw some ladders. If you don't, you got, your, that's what you're, if you can't burn in your burn tower or you're not burn, throw some, you can go to the training center and throw ladders all night long. You are That's not fun. going to be good at throw ladders unless you practice. And I look at it, you know, like I'm not I'm not the correct weight that I should be right now at this at this time in my life, but I'm 255 or 260 pounds. Ed turnout yeah, gear. But you're like Arnold. You're yeah, like right. Arnold. Ed turnout gear. Ed, an SCBA. Ed, a power saw over my shoulder. You're looking at 350, 360, 300 and something pounds climbing that ladder. One guy. Back to that impact load when you decide just to jump right. off the ladder. Well, you won't see me jumping off anything. But but the point is, you can imagine somebody hit, somebody listening can probably figure it out. There's a formula for that. What the weight of is and then how far you travel and what the impact is on the bottom. It's got to be phenomenal. And it and it's not good for your knees or your ankles or anything either, you know? Well, and, and so, and, and let me just throw one one more little, little tidbit about, you know, when we're talking about throwing ladders and knowing your sizes and so on and so forth. And we talked about this at dinner, actually. There are, well, the, the, the confidence you get with throwing ladders is one thing and raising them and throwing them and carrying them and all that stuff and storing them. The confidence you get getting on a roof is second and just as important because there are firefighters 
there are farmers today riding ladder trucks who have never been on their home to clean their gutters out. Right. You say, so when's the last time you've been on your roof? I've never been on my roof. I had a roofer coming through. I've never been on You've there. never been on your roof. Have you ever been on any others? And, and if, if you think, you know, you haven't been on a nozzle in a while or crawling doing a search, when's the last time you've been on So, you know, this is back to drill, 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 yep. train, train, train. Yep. And be one, ready. one more last point that I want to make because I just said something else a minute ago. <laughs> if, if you're jumping off of a ladder and you're worried about the impact, you know what I'd be more worried about? If I got to jump off a ladder to get off it, how am I getting back on it? Yeah. How am I getting back up to that ladder? That might be something you, well, better, you, you, you better make a decision about how you're going to get off the ladder. I teacher at U of I, it wasn't even that high. You, you, you know, you, you said that 18 inch or foot, whatever, pair, two foot pair, but it's the guys that don't swing off. And I would teach them swing off and actually lower yourself you with, your with, your, with your arms. With right. your arms. Right. But, you know, so it doesn't take that much. You have to jump four or five feet. It's just a matter of you jump it off. So, yep. all right. So, um, if they want to get a hold of your best email, Chief John Salka at gmail.com. And I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. We appreciate you uh, tuning in again and listening. Uh, spread the word to your friends. Uh, if you know us, we never have an agenda, we never have a script. We don't get paid for doing this. We just, we call it old school, not because it's old fashioned, it's because. You know what? We talk about everything from back then to now about training, about staying active, about being a student in the fire service and all that stuff. So we always end all of our shows, John, with a very important phrase. And I know you can appreciate this with having two Marines in your family. Please keep the men and women in armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. Remember this, never forgetting means just that, never forgetting.